Hello to all of you out there in this great big world of social media. Yes, this is your brother Dana coming to you again from the city of Chicago. And a shalom, shalom, shalom to all of the precious chosen people of the Most High God. To you who are the true Hebrews. And if you're wondering who I'm talking about, well, in this country, we have formally called them colored African Americans or blacks. But those are not who they are. Who they truly are are the true chosen people, the true Hebrews of the Bible. And to you I say, Shalom. Um, my mom and I and a cousin, we, we very often uh, in our conversations become so marveled or shocked, um, shaking our heads at how our fellow white evangelical family members, some of them literally blood, others, you know, just church family members, how they cannot see the deeds and, and the truth of who they call their savior, President Trump. How do they not see you know or even this this is this really shocks me that i had a conversation with somebody very close to me last week about president trump and i finally in this conversation asked him you and you white evangelicals you, you put him in a position just like Jesus Christ because never once in these almost four years, never once have I ever heard you fault him for one thing. Everything that rises up, you blame the media, you blame this, and you come to this fact that President Trump is innocent. And yet, I thought Jesus was the only man that walked on earth that never did anything wrong. And then you want to say, no, I don't put him in the same category as Jesus Christ. But yet you'll listen to him in the Constitution of the United States of America even more than you will listen to the words of your Savior, Jesus Christ. Very, very plainly in an example. The, the uh, uh, Constitution grants you and I the right to bear arms, but yet Yeshua HaMashiach, or Jesus Christ, sit in the Bible and said to one of his disciples when they pulled out a sword to cut off the ear of one of the guards that were coming to arrest him and to persecute him, when they drew the sword and cut off his ear, Jesus rebuked them and said, put that sword back in its place. For those who live by the sword will die by the sword. And then when he ended that, he basically said, what is about to happen has to happen because this is a part of God's purpose. So do not fear, but trust. So, why do my white evangelical family members not see the truth of who Trump is? Because they're blinded. And why are they blinded? Because they're living by two things which are opposite of living what they should be living by if they are truly a follower of Jesus Christ. They live by fear. They fear who they hate who is number one, our black brothers and sisters, and then you got your minorities, other minorities, and then you have your immigrants. So because they fear them, they hate them, they fear them. And when you fear and hate, you are not in the will. You cannot hear the voice of God because fear is the opposite of faith and hate is the opposite of love. So I went ahead so that so you, my white evangelical family members, do not think that this is just my own coming up with, with these definitions or what I think fear is and what I think hate is. Fear is an unpleasant feeling triggered by the perception of danger, sometimes real, but sometimes imagined. Wow. Fear, an unpleasant feeling. See, that's what you're feeling. You're feeling an unpleasant feeling of fear because you have a perceived danger arising from people that you hate, aka our black brothers and sisters. So then what is the definition of hate? 
Hate is a feeling. It can cause an angry or resentful emotional response. An older couple sees two black men driving a U-Haul truck to return it and they decide to unload gunfire. Perceived fear that has now turned into a feeling of hate that has caused them to resort to the words that they honor more than the words of Jesus Christ, which is the words of the Constitution that says, I have the right to bear these arms and therefore I will shoot what I fear and what I hate. Because after all, love means to be unselfish, to put others before you. And so that behavior right there absolutely shows that you are not operating in love. And they are only an example of the white evangelical community because they rally behind a 17-year-old young man that goes in and shoots two people. They rally behind keeping statues that lived a life, people that lived the life of hating people and murdering them. Because if that wasn't in you, you would be like me and you would vomit at the sight of our statues and monuments in this country. But you don't. You fight for it because you're in the darkness or you're in your selfishness because it's all about you. It's all about white America. After all, weren't we taught that the gospel was given to us whites, us Gentiles, to bring it across the world because we are moral, decent, colonized, organized group of people. And that is why we're bringing this good news to Africa and to all these other blankety-blank countries that your president, your savior, spoke about less than a couple years ago. See, isn't it that true that <laughs> it's been passed on that blacks should be grateful for slavery to a degree because um, at least they had an opportunity and a chance to come to the gospel? Because after all, God ordained us great white people to spread the gospel throughout the world, to bring them into morality and decency and then to colonize them and oppress them and make them think that we're greater than them. Because see, there's a saying out there that the missionaries brought the Bible to Africa and then after they were done praying, the Africans opened up their eyes to realize they were holding the Bible while white evangelicals and missionaries were holding the land and the resources. I was in Hawaii one time and I was sitting across the native Hawaiian and we were talking and I shared with them that I go to this church and this and this and we, she stopped the conversation and she said, this, this, this island was great. We were living and having a fine time until you blankety blank Christian missionaries came and stole and took away our culture, took away our land and so now my people live in poverty while you come over and vacation." Faith is devotion to duty or a person, a loyalty, the quality of keeping one's promises, belief and trust in and loyalty to God. That's faith. Love is unselfish, loyal, and benevolent behavior, concern for the good of others. Benevolent means marked by doing good, organized for the purpose of doing good. And even Jesus said that what should you do with your enemy? You should love him. You should do good unto him. You should even do so much good that you're reaping upon them coals. But see, hatred, again, is a feeling that causes you to be angry, resentful, as an emotional response, which can be used against certain people. 
See, you're taking your anger against our black brothers and sisters when the reality is, is you should be taking your anger against the sin of white evangelical America, which what is that sin? We murdered innocent people to take this land. We oppressed and enslaved innocent people to build this land. And now we want to blame the civil unrest and the looting and the rioting on the very individuals that we have been victimizing and oppressing and murdering and lynching and raping for over 400 years. See, if your faith was in God, let's say your faith was in God, and let's compare it to the faith of the Israelites when they left Egypt. See, my grandpa told me that actually the founding forefathers were more like Judeo-Christians. He said, we don't believe in Jesus Christ, but we also be we took the stance of the Jews with their ancestors when they left the Egyptians to pursue or to have the freedom to pursue the freedom of religion. So let's use that example that my grandpa gave me as that being true. And, you know, now we are this great Christian nation that believes in Jesus Christ and has faith in God. So now we left Britain and we have gotten this land and we've gotten it by the hand of God. Just like the Hebrews were released from Egypt by the hand of God. And so now here we are with our black brothers and sisters rising up, perceived that they're coming to overtake us. They're coming to destroy this great land that, that we white evangelicals built. And it's be, there before us. And when we turn around and look behind us, we see all these immigrants and Mexicans and all these people trying to unjustly or law illegally find their way into our great nation to then take our money and destroy our beautiful cities. Well, if God really gave us this land, then why are you fearing? Because we know what fear causes and doubt and even hatred. We'll find out what happened to those Hebrews in the 40 years of walking around in the wilderness because of their own mumbling and hate and their own fear and lack of faith, they never made it in. Well, some, most of you, my white evangelical family members, when you see all that you're seeing are not going to make it through because you're operating in fear and in hate. Because if you were operating in faith, you would do just this and sit back and say, well, if God did it for his people way back for Moses and he did it for Jesus, Joshua and now we're all the people because we have a relationship in Jesus Christ we can sit back and know that if God is for us who can be against us that no man is greater than God if he brought down the walls of Jericho if he departed the Red Sea and then killed all of Pharaoh's army in it when he re you know when he when he caused it to to come back the way it was we can rejoice we can praise him we can dance because we have faith that the blessings upon our lives come directly from the Most High God or come from God because after all, God blessed the USA. He gave it to us and he's blessed us. But that's not the type of behavior I see from you. I see fear and I see hate. And because of that, you are blinded to your own demise, to your own destruction. See, the Hebrew word for faith is an action-oriented word meaning support. This is important because the Western white evangelicals concept of faith places the action on the one you have faith in, such as we have faith in God, so God is going to do this for us, and God is going to do this for us, and God is going to do this for us. But see, the Hebrew word places the action on the one who supports God. It is not knowing that God will act, but rather I will do what I can do to support God. When we say I have faith in God, we should be thinking I will do what I can to support God. So now do you want to ask me the reasons for all these videos and you, my white evangelical family members that are hating on me, calling me crazy. Many of you say I've drunk the Kool-Aid. 
because I'm doing what I've been instructed to do and that's to support the God that I have faith in. I no longer have faith in the white evangelical God of white supremacy that is taught through Christianity. But I have the faith in the true and living God, the Most High God, the God of our Hebrew brothers and sisters who we are dwelling amongst here. And I will do everything in my power to support God by loving, protecting, and proclaiming the truth. After all, Christianity, you say the people in the land and the nation that supports, protects, and takes care of God's chosen people, Israel, will be blessed. But those who curse will be cursed. Love is self-sacrificing generously unending, not a temporary feeling or attraction. So white evangelical family members, I'd like to ask you to determine what are you living by? Are you living by fear or faith? Well, this is what the Bible says in 2 Timothy 1 and 7. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. I do not see power and eventually you will see for yourself that you will have no power to overcome this season of judgment, of justice that's coming down upon white evangelical America for all of the things that we have done to God's chosen people and people, period, across the globe. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Joshua 1.9, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Doesn't seem like you uh, believe that or you absolutely can see that you're not living by that because you should be turning all of your support to the God you say you serve, not to the president. Hebrews 13, 6, so we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper, I will not fear. What can man do to me? Obviously, you do not have faith. So, white evangelicals, are you living by love or hate? 1 John 4, 20, if anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he does not love his brother whom he has seen, he cannot love God whom he does not see. The only way you can get past that, white evangelical fam family members, is by doing this. Going back to the roots of this nation, when they taught our forefathers that black people are not fully human. So therefore, that is your only excuse to say they're not human. So therefore, they're not my brothers or sisters. So either you believe that, or you then have to acknowledge there are brothers and our sisters, and if you hate them, then you cannot love God, and you cannot be of God. 1 John 2, 9, whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. Thus is why you are blinded to the things that your savior, your President Trump is doing that is actually leading you to the slaughter. Leviticus 19.34, listen to this. The foreigner residing among you must be treated as your native born. Love them as yourself. For you are foreigners in Egypt and I am the Lord your God. So that verse is going to my Hebrew brothers and sisters, but also then it's going right to my evangelical brothers and sisters. So our immigrants, our foreigners, let's even say our blacks are foreigners because we brought them here as slaves. They were not with us when we came. So we look at them as foreigners. Well, what does the Bible command you to do? To love them as yourself, to treat them as yourself, as a native born. And you're going to tell me you do that? And you're going to sit here and honestly tell me, white evangelical church, that you do. <laughs> Hebrews 10, 38 to 39, And my righteous one will live by faith. And I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed but to those who have faith and are saved. That's why I'm no longer a Christian. That's why I have left you. 
and your religion. So now what happens to you, my white evangelical family members who are living by fear and hate? 1 John 2, 9 to 11. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in the darkness. Anyone who loves his brother and sister lives in the light and there is nothing in them to make them stumble. <laughs> to make them stumble. But anyone who hates a brother or sister is in the darkness and are, walks around in the darkness. They do not know where they are going. Because if you knew where you were going, you would change your heart. You would change from fear to faith and from hate to love. But because of the darkness, you are blinded. 1 John 1, 6, If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. And I know most of you, my white evangelical family members, are going to sit here and say, well, Dana, you're judging us. You're, you're hating us. No, I'm not hating you as a white person. I'm hating what the evil that white individuals in white America has done for over 400 years since we slaughtered, murdered, raped, and killed, and abused the Native American Indians to obtain this land and then we enslaved and oppressed and lynched and whipped to death and tortured and beat our black brothers and sisters to build this land and yet today we still honor our heritage even as Trump said in a speech a couple days ago whether it was in North Carolina or where that we are not going to be dismayed or we are not going to be ashamed of our history but we're going to stand on the legacy of our history that's right because like I said you as my white evangelical family members do not live by the words of your Savior you live by the words of the Constitution and the amendments. And number one, that says you have the right to bear an arm and you have a right to use it to keep what you've stolen. And I'll say this again. If I got my wife while she was married which meant I cheated on her and with her husband to wrongfully get her as my wife. I guarantee you that throughout my marriage, if I see that she may talk to another man or get close to a man in my perception, I'm going to start fearing the fact that I'm going to lose her the same way that I obtained her. If I could get her that way, then somebody else might get her that way. So therefore, I live in fear. And at any time I see a perceived villain coming to talk to my wife, I will hate him. Instead of acknowledging my sin, that how I obtained her was ungodly in the first place and everything I do from that point on unless I absolutely repent and go back and make amends will not be forgotten by God. White America, you live by fear and hate because you took this land in an ungodly way and now you fear that it's going to be taken from you by God. May God have mercy.